Prices of gold on the world market have fallen by about 9% this year and it totals about 17% year to date. Now the falling prices have led mining firms to lay off about 2,000 workers, we are told. And I'm here at the Lands and Natural Resource Ministry to speak to the minister in charge, Honorable uh, Nusa Fuseni, to tell us what exactly government is doing to cushion the mining sector from a total shutdown. Your life on business life, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. First and foremost, I want to know how worrying this particular situation is to you. Well, this is definitely very worrying. Uh, you, you've taken it from the angle of uh, uh, the layoffs, uh, many people who will be out of employment, the social consequences that unemployment can bring. I mean, about in, in society, the pressures on the, that unemployment can bring onto government. I mean, it's quite daunting. The other side is that the fall in the prices of gold is going to have serious impact on our ability to mobilize tax revenue for the development of this country. So looking at it both ways, it's, it's a matter that is of deep concern to this country. Mm. Now, what exactly is government doing to cushion those affected, um, let's talk about compensations of some sort? Well, it is not even by the terms of the employment. Uh, uh, when miners are to be laid off, I mean, they ought to be given severance awards and, and others. Uh, as a ministry, uh, any time a, a mining company wants to take that action of reducing labor, and, and that is v consequent upon the drop in prices. You know, minute gold prices begin dropping, mining companies will have to look at their cost of operation. And the first obvious thing to look at is the number of people who are employed in the mining company to, to slash down the numbers. One, uh, they don't need that much gold now because uh, if cost of production is high, uh, they will the margins, the profit margin becomes very small, very thin, and so they cut down the number of people, and then you might be able to save some cost. Uh, so it is it is to be anticipated, and 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 we say that before a mining company can lay off, they must go through the motions. I mean. Uh, uh, see to it that compensation payments are made uh, to these people, severance payments. But the people there who are going to lay off are not interested in compensation payments. Or they want long-lasting, lifelong employment. And so that is where it is worrying to government that these people will be thrown out and, and <clears throat> those who have been at it for a very long time will have to go and learn new skills. Some might be fairly old in life and, and learning new skills might be simply impossible. And, and, and so we're looking carefully at the situation. And we have been talking to the mining companies and telling them that, yes, presently there are challenges. But within these challenges are opportunities. Let's work together. The Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources, the Ministry of Finance and, and, and Economic Planning, and the mining companies will work together to create opportunities out of the present challenges, and that is possible. And it is in the light of this that we have encouraged the Ghana Chamber of Mines to call a meeting of all the major, the majors, the big mining companies who are their members, to come dialogue with us on charting the way forward in the face of this present fall in gold prices. Now, do you see prices of gold on the world market? going down continuously and if it is to happen um, how is government going to cushion the mining sector from a total shutdown well i i see what is happening presently as being cyclical i mean the gold prices will rebound it is not gold prices rebounding that is my concern now is when it will take for gold prices to rebound means that we have to deal with the situation until such a time that gold prices start picking up. And what do we do? It's systems must be put in place. Now, some companies want to put their mines under care and maintenance because they are unable to produce enough to uh, mitigate whatever cost that they are, they are, they are, they are incurring in producing. Uh, some also want to scale down so that they can remain afloat until such a time that gold prices start picking up and then they can add on to labor uh, and, and increase production. In the face of all this, the government is also looking at the fiscal regime. It affects our fiscal regime in ways that will not bring tax revenue to government. 
government is looking closely at the fiscal regime to see what adjustments can be made in the fiscal regime and fiscal policy to assure government of the needed revenues and also guarantee the uh, mining companies of some margin of profit to continue to stay in, in business. And that's what we are doing now. Mm. Now, um, let's talk about the prices of gold on the world market. We have no control over them. And so if they are going down, it's obviously affecting us. Now, what do we do? Can't we um, restrict supply of gold in order to increase the demand for it? Well, even countries hold gold bars. Uh, as a form of security against uh, future uh, occurrences. And so gold, you will always continue to have a market, but that market becomes potent when demand far exceeds supply. Presently, there's demand. We're not saying that there's no demand. There's demand. But the demand is such that it doesn't drive up the price of gold. Okay. What we are doing policy-wise as a country is to move away from a mono-mineral-based economy. Gold, gold, gold sub subject to the vestitudes of the international market. Vary I mean, fall in prices and rise in prices of commodities, um, particularly gold on the international market, affects us. Can affect us positively or negatively. In this case, a drop in the price of gold is affecting us negatively. So we have said that we must exploit the full potential of other minerals. In short, we are looking to diversify the exploitation of minerals in this country. So we're encouraging more investment in the diamond sector. We're encouraging investment in the bauxite industry. We're encouraging investment in iron. We've since discovered a copper, lead, and others in the Nkwanta formation. And so we encourage the salt. We've got a 500-kilometer coastline that is capable of producing solar salt to feed our petrochemical industry and also supply some to Nigeria. And so we're looking to diversify so that when the price of a, a commodity on the international world market is dropping, we can, I mean, do, all the prices will not drop at the same time. So we'll be able to take advantage of uh, the prices of other commodities that we are producing whose prices are not dropping. So the way to go, and that is the way we are going as a country, is to diversify the exploitation of our mineral resources. Well, finally, Minister, um, this diversification that you talk about, uh, we have heard it over time. When exactly is this thing going to happen? No, we are promoting, we are promoting uh, 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 the, uh, the uh, potentials of these areas, and we are encouraging investors to come in. I mean. Uh, uh, without divulging information, I can tell you that last week I had extensive discussions with the president in connection with the bauxite and iron ore, uh, I mean, uh, potentials of this country, mm -hmm. and how we can take advantage of existing infrastructure in this country to create an integrated aluminum industry in this country. And, and uh, Mr. President was telling me, yes. They appear to be innovative ways of ensuring that the exploitation of bauxite benefits a country. And so we're looking at that seriously. I mean, that is the way to go. Also, in the mining sector as a whole, even though a great improvements have come in terms of the extractive industries transparency initiative and the tracking and benchmarking of revenue from the uh, 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 exploitation of our mineral resources, we still are pushing ahead to ensure that mining gets integrated with the rest of the economy. For hundreds of years, we have been mining. Some say, especially the chairman of mine says, no, we shouldn't say that we have not derived benefits. But we're saying that we could derive more. When mining as an activity is integrated, that was what Bishop Akologo was referring to as local content that we ensure that goods and services that are available locally for mining activities in this country are procured locally. That way you will expand the economy in ways that will create employment and also assure the country of the necessary tax revenue. Government is pushing ahead to also ensure that we don't just export raw 
gold, primary gold, to the uh, uh, European countries or consuming countries, we have to add value. And adding value to our primary resources will create benefits five times more than exporting it in this war for. So these are things that government is intending to do.